How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about how to make OBGYN clinics more inclusive for trans masculine individuals and transgender men. And this is an extension or kind of a manifestation, I don't know. This is basically a projection of the resource that I published two years ago in the Journal of Lower Genital Tract Disease in my first ever re first author research publication. It's a huge accomplishment for me and I think that information should be accessible to you all, specifically TGNC folks in general, because it's pertaining to TGNC people. And I, I and I think it'll help advocate for yourself in an OBGYN setting so that you are aware of what they can improve on and push them to improve on it, or else, you know, you can scrutinize them if they don't. Now, before I start talking about it, there are some things that I do want to address, even though I'm talking about OBGYN inclusiveness for transmasculine and transgender men, OBGYN inclusiveness for trans feminine and transgender women are very important as well. But my research primarily focused on masculine uh, identifying trans people. So that's what this video is about. I can make about, uh, I can make a video about um, transgender women at a later time and trans feminine people at a later time but today we're going to be focusing on trans masks in addition to that i will be using anatomical terms when it ref when i refer to anatomical parts and i know for a lot of trans people anatomical names are a form of dysphoria but i do want to urge and push the idea that we need to separate anatomical parts from gender intersex people also have those anatomical parts as well so we need to start getting comfortable with separating anatomical parts with gender identity i think they don't like match at all and also i do want to acknowledge that it can be triggering it was triggering for me for a very long time so i can sympathize so trigger warning if you are triggered by anatomical names please shut this video down move on to the next one before I even talk about OBGYN clinics in particular, medicine as a whole has been very transphobic to transgender people and also very racist and anti-LGBTQ for decades now, even hundreds of years. So we need to fix that problem too. And um, I want to emphasize the fact that studies have shown up to 28% of trans people avoid going to the doctor specifically their number one reason specifically being the fact that they feel like they will get discriminated against by their physician and i can relate to this growing up i never wanted to go to the doctor because i was constantly afraid that my doctor was going to judge me for who i was my sexuality and my gender identity and you know i i don't i don't want to blame my parents but they but they usually went to a very conservative physician and I didn't feel comfortable revealing all of myself to them and I feel like it hindered a lot of my health care because of that. So the field of OBGYN obstetrics and gynecology particularly looks at the health of the following organs, the breasts, the uh, uterus, the vagina, the cervix, and ovaries, and external genitalia as well. So if you are an individual with any number of those parts, you probably need to go to an OBGYN at some point in your life to make sure that all your bits are working fine. However, for hundreds of years and even decades now, OBGYN clinics have been exclusionary towards cisgender women and even you, you can even see it in some, some OBGYN clinics because they're named women's health centers. Unfortunately, that creates an exclusionary area where trans people don't feel like they fit in to it. However, if you are an individual with the parts that I listed before that pertains to the field of OBGYN, you need inclusive care in those areas, particularly the most severe being cancer screening, but also you sh STI screenings, also the health of those things. People develop things like polycystic ovarian syndrome and endometriosis. Trans people are not immune to those illnesses that we need to get regular screenings of. And that is why it's very important for OBGYN clinics to intentionally make their spaces inclusive. 
Now, my research particularly looked at three separate things that OBGYN clinics can do to make transgender masculine individuals and trans masculine non-binary people feel accepted in OBGYN clinics. And those three things are language and framing of questions when talking about trans masculine patients, inclusive environments within OBGYN settings, and the lack of gynecology and education that harm and ignore the needs of transgender, masculine, non-binary individuals. When I talk about there, there being a lack of education when it comes to TGNC health in OBGYN education, in a study of about 141 gynecologists, only about 29% of providers felt comfortable treating the gynecological needs of transgender people. Honestly, in my opinion, there is no excuse for that in this in this world right now because of the fact that there are so many educational tools for physicians to get comfortable framing questions, to get comfortable asking relevant questions, and also being respectful when they're asking their questions, asking for pronouns, and even simple things as what kind of sex are you having instead of are you having PIV sex because that's exclusionary as well. Honestly, there are so many resources out there for physicians to get educated. It's no excuse. And if you do have a provider that doesn't know how to treat a transgender patient, you have to challenge them. And I feel like this is a lot of labor for trans people in general, but I feel like physicians need to be challenged and motivated, honestly, motivated to care about their trans patients and motivated to learn about how to properly care for their trans patients. Also, I feel like OBGYN clinics completely ignore the fact that not just cisgender women get pregnant, trans masculine people and transgender men can also get pregnant. So I am going to push OBGYN clinics to go beyond showing pictures of cisgender women being pregnant in, bro in brochures, but to also include pictures of trans masculine people being pregnant next to those pictures as well. It creates a very, very nurturing environment and actually studies have shown that because of this exclusionary view of pregnancy that transgender men, trans masculine people unfortunately are ignored by the medical system, non-binary people I don't think even exist at this point in medical literature, but that's problematic. But also just including pictures like that creates a better environment for you to feel comfortable, open, and be willing to learn from your physician and for your physician to learn from you. Regardless of whether or not someone got top surgery, breast cancer is still very real regardless of gender identity. Yes, cisgender men also get breast cancer and that is a very important place for us to get cancer screenings. And when we get mammograms, that can be a very dysphoric experience that physicians can alleviate for their TGNC patients. That's pretty much it for the things that I talked about in my research. Obviously this is ongoing and there are more things that physicians can do to make their places more inclusive. But I really wanna conclude with the fact that it is not that hard to make your clinic inclusive towards TGNC folks. It's actually very easy. It takes a little bit of education. It takes a little bit of effort. You, you honestly don't even have to do, do that much for trans people to feel comfortable in your clinic as long as there's intent and respect there. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something and I hope this encourages you to challenge your OBGYN providers if they are not being inclusive. That's it for all I have for this week's video. I hope you like, subscribe, share this video, um, send it to people that might benefit from it and I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.